light of infinite. In the first 30 days after my mom passed away, my family, friends, and I split the responsibility for saying the Mishnayot for the purposes of my mom's Aliyah Neshama, soul elevation. When I read mine, I noticed right away that my mom's first name was right there on top of her last name, Frida Tzipor, right there in the Mishnah. It was a moment when I felt that she was winking at me, and Hashem was letting me know, it's okay, your ima is with you for the rest of your life as light in infinite recursion. I was reminded of this as I started to dive into this week's Parsha, Mitzora. It was a double Parsha last year, so I'm now writing it as its own in completion of the five book series, Light of Infinite. Just then, again, the first few psukim in the verses, I see not only my mom's name, Tzipor, but my name, Erez. It's what we call Hashkacha Prati, Divine Providence. When I can see once again that not only is my mother and her soul and her memory in the learning and the writing that I'm doing, but she's showing me that we are together, our souls inseparable, our journey in light, infinite. Staying tapped into Hashkacha Prati, seeing divine providence, requires proactive alignment. There's that feeling inside, a positive, inspirational, elevating feeling when one feels tapped into one's purpose and to the creator. And the opposite feeling when we feel trapped and one's actions are disconnected from positive, from purpose, from servitude to our creator and to others. In the Beit HaMikdash, the holy temple, sitting on top of the holy ark were the two Kruvim, the winged cherubs. The Talmud teaches us that each of the Kruvim had the image of a child's face. And it's written in the Zohar that one was in the likeness of a boy and the other a girl. When we as the people were in alignment with our source, the Kruvim would face each other. But when we weren't, they would face away from one another. And the opposing forces manifest as the Yitzhar Hara, evil inclination, or Klipot. In the world, it's the outer coverings or shells that conceal godly light. In ourselves, it's the negativity or egocentricity that keeps us from connecting to our true selves as creations with the divine purpose, which connects us to the divine light. This negativity or ego is like the shell of a fruit. It does serve to protect the fruit, just as there are times that it's useful for our own self-preservation. But it too must be removed to get to the sweetness. We have to remove our layers of ego and negativity to get to the root of our being and purpose. As we keep learning and needing to remind ourselves, our entire purpose is to reveal the godly light that is concealed throughout creation and throughout our beings and experiences. In last week's parsha at Tazliya, we learned about sarot, sad things, and that sarot come from lashon hara, negative speech, which means one is looking at people and oneself negatively. This ayin hara, evil eye, leads to lashon hara, which means looking at people with a bias towards the left side, the side of gevura, judgment. As we read these parshiot, we see the word nega, blemish, disease, repeated. This is a space which encompasses the lowest form of experience. The Ramban teaches the distinction between nega, disease, and oneg, pleasure, is only a change of perspective. Hebrew is read from right to left, and the word nega, as you see, has the ayin on the left. And as the Rebbe Rashab taught the Friedrich Rebbe, if we lead it with chesed, loving kindness, which is when we tap into the right side of the sphere out of our own beings, and look through the right eye, so to speak, the ayin of goodness leads. And that's when we can move away from nega and have oneg, pleasure, which is the highest form of life experience. One of the most important principles of manifesting good and subduing the bad is being protective over one's speech. This parsha opens up with how to atone for Lashon Hara. It's written, The Kohen will command the two live, clean birds, cedar wood, crimson thread, and hyssop should be taken for the person undergoing purification. In the time of the Beit HaMikdash, leprosy would befall the person who spoke negatively. As it's stated in the Talmud, evil gossip kills three, one who says it, the one who listens, and the subject of the gossip. And as Otto von Bismarck was quoted saying, better pointed bullets than pointed speech. It's asked, why must the person bring two birds to sacrifice? Chazal teach, let the chattering birds come and effect forgiveness for the chattering person. We all want a Shem Tov, a good name. People spend their lives trying to protect their reputation. When a person's reputation takes a hit, especially when it's baseless, they feel powerless and often afraid and ashamed. Tulane in Chinese means lose face, because it's the feeling of the person whose reputation has been tarnished. They feel unable to show their face in public, or in a more extreme circumstance, as if they no longer exist as they once did. It's written in Mishle, life and death are dependent on the tongue, speech. The Talmud teaches that just as the learning of the Torah equals all the mitzvot combined, so does speaking Lashon Hara equal all the sins combined. The Chafetz Chaim, who wrote two Sfarim on Lashon Hara, teaches that Sinat Chinam, baseless hatred, is equal to idol worship, immorality, and murder, which is what the Gemara says regarding Lashon Hara. For three sins a person is punished in this world and has no share in the world to come. Idol worship, immorality, and murder, and Lashon Hara equals them all. 
The Chafetz Chaim teaches that Hashem in His infinite wisdom has decreed that the Satan, Sitra Akhra's power to accuse us is directly related to how we speak about one another. When we refrain from speaking badly about one another, then Hashem, like a loving father, is willing to overlook our misdeeds. However, when we accuse one another of wrongdoing through Lashon Hara, we give the Satan power to stand before Hashem and accuse us of wrongdoing. There's a Midrash that tells the story of a peddler who proclaimed, Who wants life? Who wants life? Rabbi Yana approached this peddler, curious as to what elixir he might be peddling that could guarantee long life. The peddler looked at Rabbi Yana and simply said that he nor any Talmud Chacham would require such an elixir. As others inquired, the peddler took out a Tehillim, pointing to the Pasuk, Which man desires life? Guard your tongue from evil. Rabbi Nachman of Breslov expands on Ruach and Rhythm in possibly his most famous and fundamental teaching from Likutei Maran. It's chapter Reish Pei Bet, 282, also known as Azamra, I Will Sing. Rabbeinu teaches that judging everyone in yourself favorably, always looking for the good points, is essentially the secret to blessings and happiness. It also ensures switching from a frame of mind of Deen, Judgment, and Speaking Lashonara, to one seeing the good and speaking only positively. Rabbeinu explains that sifting the good from the bad is how melodies are created. And we see this through playing a musical instrument, which gathers the good ruach from the ruach of gloom, depression. In essence, music is made through the separation of good from evil by selecting and gathering the good points and good notes from the bad. That's how beautiful songs are created. And so when a person doesn't let themselves fall, but revives oneself by searching and seeking out the good points in themselves and others, gathering and separating those good points from evil and impurity within, this is how melodies of oneself and harmony with each other manifest. This is how we are able to pray, sing, and give praise to Hashem in tshuva, return, and repentance, which brings life, happiness, and ultimate unification. Rabbi Aaron Cutler reminds us that to be unified and wholehearted with Hashem means not to live a life of contradiction, and that someone who speaks Lashon Ra lives a life of contradiction. It's not easy as it's something that often comes naturally, sharing a story or experience involving another person. But the more we are careful to only uplift each other through speech, especially when the person isn't present, the more we are aligned with positivity and light. This incredible pianist asked me yesterday what I think the purpose of life is. I said that it's to reveal Hashem's light in this world, to reveal what is concealed, and that is how we shine our own light, which brings forth everyone's light, which is the only way for us to bring awareness to the light of infinite and to usher in the final redemption. Shabbat Shalom.